Hi there, it's uh, Jason Gorman from Codemanship here with the second part of the fifth video in our series on test-driven development in Python. If you recall in the previous video, we were demonstrating uh, what some people call inside-out test-driven development, where we test drive, the, if you like, the, the internal pieces of the design jigsaw, and then we put it together at the end to make the whole. And we looked at the advantages and disadvantages of that approach. The advantage being that your tests pinpoint problems much more easily because they're, look, they're binding directly to particular internal parts of the design. But the, the downsides are that, um, first of all, there's a danger if you, if you create pieces of the jigsaw first that when you try to put them together, they don't fit. Um, and there's also a lot more coupling between the test code and the internal details of your implementation design. So if you want to change the internal design, it gets harder because you've got to change lots of tests as well. Um, what we're going to demonstrate in the second part of this is um, driving it the other, way, the other way around. So we're going to be driving the design from the outside in. And I've made a start on this. So it's the same problem, the Mars Rover exercise. Um, but this time, rather than writing a test for a right method and a test for a left method, all of my tests are just using this go method. So they're all working from the, the outermost, the entry point, if you like, to our Mars rover. Um, and I've done um, a bunch of tests for, for turning um, right and turning left. And if we take a look at our implementation here, you can see that I've done a little bit of refactoring here, um, but we've got a bit more refactoring to do. Now, when we do it inside out, I kind of plan in my head, oh, well, I'm going to need a method for turning right and I'm going to need a method for turning left. But here I'm just saying, look, this is the code that I need to pass these tests. And then we're going to refactor this code um, to clean it up. And hopefully what you'll see is that, that an internal structure starts to emerge through that process of refactoring. For example, here we've got a, um, a, a, a set of statements here for, for how to turn right. So if we extract these into their own method, let's call that method right. OK, and as soon as I've done that, of course, I rerun my tests. So we have we now have a, a method for turning right. And here we have a method oops, for turning left. So rather than planning up front that I'll need these methods and writing tests for them, what I'm actually doing is I'm discovering these methods through the process of refactoring. They're emerging as we add more and more test cases. and. Um, there you can see the internal structure. These methods have a little bit of duplication. These two lines of code are kind of the same as these two lines of code. The only difference is which way around our compass, our list of directions is facing. So when we um, turn left, we reverse the compass. So what I could do to remove that duplication is I could extract a method called turn, and that will just turn in whatever direction clockwise that the compass is facing. So let's do that there. OK. And we're actually going to pass our compass in. So let's add that as a parameter. Um, let's call that uh, that's a, a little, I'm actually going to call it compass. And rather than setting a default value here, what I'm going to do instead is I'm just going to pass it in method there. Would be lovely if we could do that automatically, but unfortunately, because of the lack of type information, it's very difficult to automate that refactoring. OK, let's run that. That's fine. And then we can reuse that method with our reversed index here. So our reversed compass, if you like. and. Yes, we need a self there. OK. So we rerun that. So a very similar kind of internal structure is emerging. Um, but this time, we're discovering that structure. So we're just writing the code from the highest level. Let's say that this is the API. The Go method is the API of our rover. We're writing tests at that level. Um, and then the internal structure is emerging as we um, simplify and clean up the code and remove duplication and so on. Um, now, I'm going to finish off this particular part of the exercise 
And rather than bore you with watching me do the whole thing, what we'll do is we'll rejoin me um, uh, when I've done um, a few more tests and we're, we're, we're pretty much at the end point. So um, a little break and then um, we'll be right back. So we fast forwarded a little bit here. Um, I've added some more tests. Let's just take a look at that for moving forward and backwards and for executing sequences of instructions. Again, note that all of the tests are um, driving our rover through that Go method. So they don't know anything about the internal design in terms of forward or back or right or left or any of those things. Um, and we now have all of our tests passing and all the behavior we need, but I've left some refactoring to the end. So we can see what else might emerge from this design. Um, for example, here, um, we've got a, a method here potentially for going forward. And let's rerun our tests. And a method here for going back. So we're kind of documenting the internal design using these method names. Say what each of these blocks of code is doing, which is a, a very legitimate refactoring. We refactor our code to make it easier to essentially tell its own story. And also, if we look inside these methods for forward and back, um, they're kind of very, very similar. So there might be an opportunity here. Um, bearing in mind the rule of three, and we've only got two examples here, but I think I can see what the pattern is. Remember, with the rule of three and duplication, three is the average, but sometimes you can see the pattern. And the pattern is this. Let's use this is our sort of template, if you like. So we'll have a method for moving, moving in whichever direction, whichever vector we tell it to move in. Okay. So let's replace both of those. What a smart tool we have there. And then what we can do is we can inline these vectors. They're not really adding any value, having a local variable there. And we'll inline. That. And you will notice if you watch the previous video in this series um, that um, this internal design is looking very, very familiar. Um, but the difference here is that we're discovering it. So what we've done, rather than test drive individual pieces of the jigsaw and then try and put them together at the end, we've actually created our jigsaw and then we've cut it into pieces. So those pieces are guaranteed to fit. So this is one big advantage of working from the outside in, is that you end up with pieces of your jigsaw that are guaranteed to fit because they're cut out of the hole um, rather than trying to fit them together at the end. Um, and we've got this. I'm not too happy about this either. We've got some duplication going on here. And we can probably turn this into something a little more spiffy. So let's imagine we have commands. And we're going to make that a... Uh, a dictionary so we have a command so let's say right for right what we'll do is we will uh, we will bind this to um, lambda expressions that invoke the right instance method okay doesn't seem particular ah, that's because there's a colon missing and left rinse and repeat We call our left instance method and forward. Calls the forward method. Back. Calls our back instance method. Okay. Now I've just added those, couldn't possibly have broken anything, but let's just make sure that we haven't. So I rerun my test, that's all fine. And what I'm going to do, rather than having these four if statements that are essentially just lookups, is it R, L, F, or B, we're actually going to look it up and use the appropriate instance method from our dictionary. So uh, let's look up the instruction command. And then we will invoke that from here. 
that should hopefully work. Okay, so we've ended up with a design that is very, very similar in terms of internal design than what we had before. But uh, very importantly, we have discovered that design working from the outside in, just writing the code to pass our tests from the Go method, which means that our test code only knows about that method. It doesn't know about right and left and backwards and forwards and so on. So we're, we're encapsulating a lot of internal design there, which is a good thing. So our test code is more loosely coupled from the implementation design, which means it will be easier to refactor that internal design if we need to in the future. Um, the other advantage of working from the outside in is that the pieces of the jigsaw, because we actually cut them out of the hole, are guaranteed to fit because they were already in there. So provided our test pass again, that's all good stuff. Um, the drawback is if we're testing everything through the Go method, when any of these tests fail, we've got a little further to look to find out which part of our internal design is actually going wrong. Now, in a class like our Mars Rover, which is relatively small and relatively straightforward, that's not going to be too much of a problem because the core stack is not very deep. There aren't many layers to this design. But in larger and more complex designs, we may have many layers in our internal architecture and in those situations, it can be very disadvantageous to have tests that only work at the outermost level. Because then when tests fail, you've got to go digging into the core stack to find out where it's gone wrong. And I tend to find that with real world designs, when I drive everything from the outside um, and don't write tests for internal pieces of the jigsaw, if you like, I tend to find I spend a lot more time in the debugger. So there's two approaches. There's the the inside-out approach, where we, we test drive the individual pieces of the jigsaw and then put the jigsaw together at the end. And the advantage of that is that it's very easy to pinpoint which part of the design has gone wrong when a test is failing. But the disadvantages are that, first of all, you might end up with the wrong pieces or the pieces not fitting at the end. And you also end up with test code that is very tightly coupled to the internal design. Um, outside in, you end up um, with pieces that are guaranteed to fit because you're essentially creating your jigsaw and then cutting the pieces out of, of that. You know, you create the picture and then cut out the pieces of the jigsaw. Um, and you also end up with test code that is, is, is more loosely coupled from the implementation architecture. So it's much more easy to, it's much easier to refactor your internal design with those kinds of tests. But they have the disadvantage as you have more, you add more and more layers to your architecture that you kind of end up very easily in a situation where they're not pinpointing where the problems are and you spend a lot, a lot more time in the debugger. So in that sense, they're less useful as regression tests. Now, in the final video in this series, uh, we're going to be looking at how we can have our cake and eat it. Can we work from the outside in, in complex multi-layered designs that also have external dependencies like real systems do, like databases and file systems and web services? How do we scale this up to real world level architectures so that we can work from the outside in? We can write tests that are relatively loosely coupled from the internal details, but at the same time do provide some pinpointing of where things have gone wrong. So, how can we work from the outside in, but also layer that so that at key points within our architecture, at key interfaces, if you like, we do end up with some tests that can pinpoint our design problems? pinpoint um, failures when, when our tests fail. So that will be the final video, number six in this series, working outside in using stubs and mocks to drive our design, working with multi-layered architectures and working with external dependencies. So this is putting it all together and scaling it up to real-world kind of problems, real-world architectures. Okay, see you in the next video.